This is 8 hours of video, 208 lectures, 1300 questions, and 3500 flashcards. And it's for 60 CPD credit hours. Uh, all candidates at the completion of the course would receive a certificate of achievement worth 60 CPD credit hours that can be used towards their uh, uh, professional development. Uh, just as chartered engineer, professional engineer, incorporated engineer, the light. Uh, if you pass this course first time or have a free renewal, uh, 120 days, 24 7 course access. Let's go to model one. The basic course, as you can see from here, we are explaining uh, how to apply for API 510 what you should ex expect on exam day, exam time management, and exam tips. So let's see first how the API exam questions are developed. Uh, normally, a uh, question is designed uh, by a subject matter expert, SMEs, and is checked by three other subject matter experts by API. And this validation exercise actually checks two items. Is the question written clearly and does the question actually cover the knowledge that is necessary or important to the pressure vessel inspect. <laughs> uh, so once that's been validated, it goes into a question data bank as non scored questions um, that um, will be included in the exam questions and they are not scored. And uh, so API wants to know that whether these are challenged by can candidates or uh, there is a high percentage of people answering it or too low. It's not within the range of the average uh, question in terms of difficulty or ease. And hence the non-scored questions. Uh, presently, there are thousands of questions in API data bank and they're grouped by topics. And uh, once you receive your score card, you will see uh, those areas that is being uh, divided group two. Uh, so anytime you do an exam, uh, absolutely there would be other sets of questions. There wouldn't be the same sets of questions that you receive if you fail the exam and you want to reattempt or reschedule. Uh, each exam has 170 questions, uh, 140 are scored, remaining 30 are pre-test questions that I talked about. The new question has been designed and validated by API subject matter experts and they are experimental questions. And uh, they want to know that, uh, you know, in terms of easiness, it's not been challenged by API candidates or, you know, that's the right questions, you know, it's quite clear and it's also relevant to your scope of work as a pressure vessel inspector. And it's not too difficult, it's not too easy. So uh, once it passed that test, it goes into a scored type of questions into the data bank. So as the API publication effectivity are revised, uh, their new question comes into the question data bank. So out of these 170 questions that they are shuffled together and you have to answer all of them because you don't know which one is scored and which one is not scored, uh, 110 are closed book and 160 questions are open book questions. <coughs> okay, let's see how to prioritize and plan your study for API 510. Uh, we have only a limited amount of time obviously to do your uh, your study before you go for the exam um, but so you need to be to be more efficient and uh, effective so you have to concentrate on high scoring areas we'll explain what are these high scoring areas and so you get the maximum uh, benefit from your study plan now 510 obviously inspection code is the most important one so we highly recommend that that's your top priority so for every hour for example you spend on other publication spend at least two hours studying 510 this is only 60 pages long and 70 75 questions out of 170 questions come from here so 
this is your top priority uh, remaining say 80 to 90 question come from some 2000 pages of the uh, other documents within the publication effective sheet that's like one question for every 20 page whereas for api 510 being 60 page long and around 60 to 70 question coming that's more than one page per uh, one question per page and some people say that if you thoroughly study 510 and they don't look at other publication chances are that you pass and we don't recommend this but it's just show how important API 510 inspection code is. Basic facts. So time is your limited resource, um, as we said before. So your learning efficiency obviously would increase if you have a plan. Um, why you should spend hundreds of hours of time uh, study uh, where you can get the same amount of a score with 50 to 60 hours of organized study plan. Um, our e-learning course of 24-7 access and there's online support in case you didn't understand any question, you have any general query, you have any technical query or you have any access or IT problems, you can always contact us by our WhatsApp, which are here um, and they will be normally respond within minutes or hours, definitely within a day. What would you recommend that you could, if you're working, you can actually study five to six hours a week. You assign, spend your time on a say a 12 week duration. So that way you can cover it and you slowly grasp the knowledge and, you know, uh, on a steady pace, you continue your, your uh, preparation for the exam. This would uh, significantly increase, uh, you know, your effectiveness and it's, it's got a very disciplined approach if you have and you have a daily schedule just one two hours a day that would be go a long way during the exam so we don't recommend that you just wait till the peak before the exam attend the classroom training and to, to pass the exam because you there's a lot of information you're going to process in a short period of time and even if you pass the exam, you'll forget most of it. Faster you learn, the faster you forget normally. So let it soak and, you know, sort of uh, take a steady and slow approach. Yeah, it's a great opportunity also to increase your inspection knowledge and skills. Uh, not only passing the exam and obviously the certification would greatly enhance your career. Uh, you can uh, study our first and second model for free and remember that your proportion of the time spent is on the expected number of the question that we have devised here and you shall learn about the concepts and knowledge and uh, the codes and recommended practices and how to apply them so if you really want to verify you during the exam if you understood the concepts and knowledge you have the knowledge, you understood the concepts, and you know how to apply this knowledge in the real scenario. So always the question comes within a scenario, within a context. It doesn't come straight away from the uh, codes of recommended practice, not normally. Okay, let's see how the questions are set. Uh, when a candidate is required to refer to a diagram or formula or a table or a graph or curve from the code, it's always an open book question. Calculation type of questions are always open book. Um, those parts of the codes and recommended practices that are not short and crisp large sentences, several descriptive statements, they're always open book. Uh, uh, here, you're not expected to remember the information, but should know how to find it in the body of the code. So we'll talk about the how to, you have to navigate through that. Um, so, on the other hand, the question that asks in a closed book part are straightforward statements directly taken from the code without much of modification, therefore easy to answer. And as a personal experience, uh, anything that repeated twice or more there are potential exam questions in the codes and recommended practices. Uh, pay special notes to figures, charts, tables, footnotes, especially. 
and also look at the tables and graphs and uh, figures and uh, see that how that works actually during the actual open book exam mock exam that we have provided you the questions uh, so to answer an open book question you only need to know where to find the answer in the code so simple as that therefore you know highlighting the paragraph you know frequenting those pages during your uh, open book uh, mock exam questions that we have provided that would be saving you a lot of time and try to solve the question actually without you know even if it's a simple uh, mathematical equation uh, try to solve it it's just like when somebody else is driving you're sitting next to it unless you don't drive you don't uh, know the way I mean, it would be you will be struggling and you want to do it yourself so even a simple math mathematical question please solve it so that you get used to it this saves you time this would avoid you some silly mistakes that you know you might do during the exam so it really helps a lot and also you know you're frequently frequenting the soft copy of pdf of this course and recommended practices so during the exam uh, that helps you a lot when you're navigating through these documents yeah. also remember that uh, again 510 should be thorough when you're studying it uh, other codes like section 8 pressure vessel construction code section 9 welding and uh, welder qualification and section 5 ndt procedures uh, or ndt code uh, it just uh, should be enough to cover the body of knowledge uh, our e-learning not only covers body of knowledge but also designed to elaborate or brief the topics depending on number of questions you may expect so it's it's proportional to number of questions the number of uh, actual question you receive during the exam so uh, to sum it up uh, we will recommend the following three phases of study if you are a month away from examination read all the codes at least once and concentrate on the highlighted text in codes uh, we also brought a publication of FT sheet highlights that you can look at it and use as a reference uh, if you're two weeks away, concentrate on highlighted text as well as the mock exam question provided and that uh, uh, just last week or a few days before the exam, concentrate on flashcards and the highlighted text that of the course and recommended practice. And management during the exam. Uh, so as you know, you got 110 questions in the gross book. Uh, and you got two hours 45 minutes but you could if you got a steady pace you can do it within two to two and a half hours and the remaining uh, 15 to 30 minutes to review any flag of question ensuring that all questions are answered uh, so always allow 15 to 30 minutes before you end that part of the exam say in this case the closed book to make sure that you have answered all the question or if uh, go back again to any flag of question and see that uh, the best of your knowledge you answer the question the open book part 60 question uh, may take a little longer because you have to refer to the code you have to go and find out where you can find the information the formula the charts figures and tables so it's 3.75 hours and uh, so it depends on how fast you can do that uh, normally each question is like less than four minutes you have uh, to answer on average so here you need your pace need to be 16 questions per hour okay uh, so always keep a tab on the right hand top corner of the computer screen it shows the remaining time versus number of questions you have attempted so for closed book you have say one and a half minutes per question whereas for open book you, uh, you have an average three oh, minutes and 45 seconds per question that means you should answer 40 questions per hour for open book and 16 questions at least as a minimum for closed book per hour uh, you should always be you're especially more than that because you want to uh, allocate some time for reviewing all the question or all the reviewing all the flagged up question because before you run out of time 
Uh, so as we suggested and recommended, you always allow 15 to 30 minutes uh, before the, your time is up for that part of the question to review all the flagged of question, ensuring that you have uh, answered it to the best of your knowledge. Uh, so for example, you may start from question number one, proceed. If after one hour you feel you are maintaining the pace that is 40 questions per hour for closed book, 16 for open book, that's fine, at least. If not, then you keep should jumping the question. For example, uh, any question which are you can answer quickly, you answer them, anything that you know is taking you time to think over it or to refer to a code or recommended practice during the open book, just flag them off jump to the next question and keep on going until you finish all the questions then come back and look at the flagged off question. It's always uh, better when you're flagging off you also uh, mark an answer because in case still you run out of time at least you answered all the questions because there is no negative mark. Uh, so at the end look at the review mark question if there is a button there you can click on that and it shows you all the questions that you flagged off, uh, have a look at them for the last, say, 5-10 minutes. All these flagged off questions, see that, uh, firstly, you answered all of them, uh, because that will increase your chance of passing. And secondly, uh, you know, once you go back, you, you can see that, uh, did you choose the right answer, uh, the best of your knowledge. Uh, any question that you have no clue at all, at least answer them to the, still to the best of your knowledge of what you think is right because there's no negative marking. So before clock again stops, make absolutely sure that you answer all the question. Um, as I said, review all button. You can press or review uh, uh, flagged off question uh, or review all button. Just make sure that you answered all of them. You have not missed anything because uh, then you know, you haven't used your chances. How to, you should prepare for classroom training. Now, uh, we have a hybrid uh, online e-learning plus classroom training offer as well. So for all those candidates who are attending our classes, we have a few recommendations and advice for you. Uh, as you can, you know, this is a five days classroom training or online training and uh, we are going to cover a, a large spectrum of knowledge which uh, according to api body of knowledge the inspector should know uh, this includes ndt um, welding uh, or wps uh, wpq welder qualification welding procedures uh, welding inspection uh, damage mechanism pressure relieving devices repair of uh, uh, pressure vessel, uh, uh, inspection code, inspection practice, uh, positive material identification, and lots of other issues. So, and then also we are going to have a, some Q&A, question and answer sessions, and also solve some questions, so all within five days. So as you can see, we are going to cover a lot within five days. So we expect that you have actually covered all the e-learning course that you shall have access and uh, uh, you have just a few glitches to resolve uh, uh, and uh, because we can't wait for, you know, we, could, uh, we have to keep a fast pace and we would like to you to pass the exam. Uh, so for the sake of reputation and business, so we want you to maximize uh, your, the benefit of attending this classroom training. Uh, obviously, you know, nobody can become a API pressure vessel inspector within five days of classroom training. Uh, but we think that if you do the e-learning um, before and then attend the classroom and clear your doubts during the, the Q&A sessions and the, you know, review of all these topics, um, you're good enough to pass. Uh, this uh, current e-learning is 50, 60 hours of study and you should allow another 20 hours to uh, solve the practice question quizzes and mock exams. Uh, it's very important that you analyze uh, your area of no 
knowledge that you're strong and uh, uh, the, the, the areas where you are weak. Uh, so as long as your weak areas are not part of high scoring area, you're safe. Otherwise, you need to build off on that strength and uh, those areas to an acceptable level. Uh, we have designed a mock question uh, to complement your knowledge, be in line with the actual exam question. And so these mock exam questions are timed. They are also, there is a flag up. So we're trying to create the same environment where you actually uh, face when you attending the exam. Uh, and solving mock exam question. Also, please remember that to understand the underlying reason for the right answer. Uh, why is it wrong? Why that is wrong? Ro ro wrong? And why one is right? And uh, sometimes there is a, a very valid statement, but because it's not relevant to the question, it's a wrong answer. So just don't jump to the answers and just tick the one that you absolutely sure that it was in the code that the statement. But that statement might not be relevant, or the question is asked in a negative answer. So which one is not? So you read the question very carefully. Uh, so you, uh, there's no trick. API does not trick to you to that. It just wants to know that you're reasoning and rational and you understand the concept and you can apply them. So they always say choose the best answer. There might be two answers that you think they are right. Choose the one that is you think is the best answer. Okay. Uh, study again regularly. Do not leave it until the day before the class. Uh, or cram it for hours it normally doesn't work that way so everybody is different in the way they study so choose your own pace and you know uh, that is finally is choose the way that's easier for you to pass the exam uh, make notes on areas that you have difficulty and raise them during the classroom training we are here to help or use our bot supply now uh, and again, we have to say that we are running a very tight schedule and uh, during the classroom training. So we expect you to be concise with your questions. Uh, it's not a brainstorming uh, storytelling session. We have a lot to cover and we want to make sure that you have grasp it and you are safe during the exam because you have enough knowledge to answer all those high scoring topics. Uh, you can always chat with us. Uh, send feedback question during the e-learning before after classroom training and uh, remember that everybody learns in his or her own way so adopt a style that suits you best and frequently short term is better than long intensive sessions um, and we have a mobile version of our course that you can you know when you can study them when you are on the move so maximizing you know your time Okay, let's see what are the percentage of questions per codes and recommend practices. Mm. As per publication effectivity sheet uh, and the uh, uh, body of knowledge, there are four codes, 510, ASME section 5, NDT, section 8, construction code and or pressure vessels, and 9, welding. And five recommended practices plus PCC2 that recently been added to the publication effectivity sheet. So, but they are not all of them, they are not equally important and they are, we do not need to be so much in depth, you know, study in depth, all this. Uh, around 50% of the question come from the inspection code, 510 plus inspection practice that you need to read together. Uh, so one is the code that tells you what are the do's and don'ts and one is the 572 is the practice which tells you how and when you should do the inspection. Uh, and 572 is normally is the one that you would use on a day-to-day -day basis as a API 510 pressure vessel inspector and uh, they will both contribute to 50% of marks uh, and I, if you compare their vocabulary is absolutely the same there is a lot of similarities between these two uh, but the purpose are different as I say uh, depth of coverage Therefore, should be proportional to the number of expected questions. That should be your study plan. And let's see how many uh, percentage of questions you have uh, per codes and recommended practice. As you can see in this table, 
510, 572 is around 50, 55%, section 8, uh, around 10%, uh, section 9, welding, and 577, you need to read together. One is the inspection, uh, welding inspection, and one is the welding procedure and welder qualification, which is the engineering part of it. Uh, again, another 10%. Section 5 NDT, you have another 10%, around 5% of question comes from damage mechanism, 571, uh, 3 to 4% from uh, 576, pressure relieving devices, and from PMI 578, you have around 2%, and repair of uh, pressure vessel, you have around 3 to 4%. So that's a percentage of question. Okay, let's see what are the API code certificates are. You have API 510, 570, and 653. These are the uh, come with authorized uh, titles. So you have API 510 authorized pressure vessel inspector. This is one of the certificates. The other two are 570 and 653. Uh, piping, authorized piping inspector and authorized above ground storage tank inspector. If you compare their publication effective sheet, you'll see that they got around 30% of the documents between themselves are the same. These are 571, damage mechanism 576, pressure relieving devices 577, welding inspection 578, PMI, uh, positive material identification, and asthma section 5, NDT, and asthma section 9, uh, welding. So approximately 30% of question for all these three core certification are from the same codes and recommended practice. So most of the inspector, normally they do all three, it uh, boosts their career. And uh, once you have done one, then you might want to go for other two, or at least one of them, other one. Uh, so all API question are uh, 510 are held three times a year. Each exam window is three weeks long for 2023. Um, uh, it is January 6th to 27, May 12th to June 2, and September 8th to 29th. So there is a three weeks window, and there are three uh, times it's held in 2023. Uh, the pass rate is around 55% uh, for this exam, and Prometric is subcontracted by API to hold the computer based exam. After registering and getting the API approval, you can Book an exam date at your selected Prometric test center. And uh, they have a network in 160 countries. So you can also choose remote proctoring. That means you can attend the exam from the comfort of your home or office. Uh, we'll explain that in our next videos. Uh, the deadline to get the API authorization in email is two and a half months uh, prior to select the test window. And uh, for exam schedules and fees, you can uh, press this button and go there and see when is the exam, what, what are the fees, uh, what is the deadline. And then if you want to apply, you can register a free account with API and click on this button or go to API ICP and, and create an account directly there. Um, this also, this button takes you directly to API ICP website. Uh, then you need to upload your qualification, provide two references, pay the fees, which is $940 if your company actually is an API member. Not, you can't become an individual member that doesn't uh, work like ASNT or other organizations. So you, if your company is it, then $730. So most of people end up paying $940 because there's not many companies who are API members. Okay, let's see what is the prerequisite, what you need to have in order to be allowed to attend the exam uh, for the API 510 Pressure Muscle Inspector Certification. It's based on a combination of education and experience that is earned within the last 10 years. Uh, so prior to submitting your application, just check the below table or go to API CP and see um, uh, what you need to have. So if you have a bachelor degree in engineering, you just need one year of experience on supervision of performance of inspection activities. If you are uh, associate degree or a two year degree, then it should can be anything on design, construction, repair, operational inspection of pressure vessel. 
but then one year should be at least on supervision or performance of the inspection activity. As you can see, the rest is that if you have a high school, it's three years, and if you have no formal education, it's five years. And the requirement is the same. So it can be, say, out of five years, four years should be design, construction, repair, operation, and then at least one year in supervision of uh, inspection activities. Okay, let's see how API verifies your experience. Uh, so they ask you for two references. So you have to put the name, uh, whether they're, you're working under them or they're your colleagues. It should be a company email that you send to, uh, you need to provide for your references and the API would send them a, a questionnaire asking them to verify uh, your experience uh, on different fields of welding, NDT, pressure vessel, design, and uh, anything else that's relevant. Uh, we recommend that you sit with your, uh, you coordinate with them, and the best thing is you sit with them and make sure that they are clicking it right. So there is a, it just takes less than a minute for them to verify you, and the minute they verify you, the API would send you the email authorization. So sit with them, make sure that they got it right or they answer it, because unless they don't answer it, you won't receive the uh, email authorization. Let's see what is the three weeks exam window. Uh, so remember that once you uh, register with API, yeah, you need to select uh, one of the windows within the current year or next year say for year 2023 we put the date so you have to use uh, to choose one of these windows that you wish to attend so once you choose that window that window is frozen for you so what does that mean you cannot change that window uh, it's as good as failing because if you want to reschedule that window um, that means you have to pay 300 dollars if you fail the exam that means you need to pay 300 dollars and reschedule so be careful uh, when you are choosing the window. Uh, so that window is frozen and uh, uh, you cannot attend any other window unless you reschedule, which is as good as failing, as we say. Application deadline is around two and a half months. Uh, and it's already in API ICP when you go to fee and schedules. And, uh, and so you need to get your uh, email authorization before that and uh, uh, once you get your email authorization uh, immediately uh, read, uh, go and uh, book a slot with Prometric who is subcontracted by API they have around centers in 160 countries they are have over 3000 centers uh, across the globe so we strongly suggest that as soon as uh, you get your email authorization, book your slot because that's first come for serve basis. Um, so we also recommend that you roughly do it actually four months before you schedule the exam. Um, for example, do not choose the next immediate test window, but the one that is say four months away. So you have enough time to study and enough time to get your email authorization. Um, so that you can book a slot with Prometric. Uh, this is especially important for API 510, 570, and 653 exam because being a day-long exam for non-core exam, normally you can find the other examination. You can normally find a convenient test location. In the test center and exam date, uh, as we said, there are 160 countries that Prometric has centers, over 3,000 centers. Uh, they all operate on first come first serve basis. They don't only uh, have a contract with API, but with many other organizations. So if you go to the test center, you see a lot of people there from different disciplines, not only API. So it's, uh, it's first come first serve. So therefore, uh, as soon as you receive your email authorization, uh, please uh, book a slot for yourself. So remember that uh, now you can do it remote. So it doesn't mean which test center is it, as long as it's remote. 
you can do it from the comfort of your office your home and also um, you can change the test center let's uh, say up to one month before the exam free of charge but between 5 to 29 days you have to pay 70 dollar to prometric to test change the test center or the, the, the time slot okay let's see what are the time limits for passing the exam so you have 12 consecutive months so one year from the first time you did your initial exam or four consecutive times so that means uh, four consecutive times you can attempt the exam and pay that say the $300 rescheduling fees or one year whichever is earlier which is the same thing um, uh, if you do not pass within a year then you have to submit a fresh application pay the full fee which is $940 again uh, we recommend that you select the test center uh prometric as soon as you receive api authorization because one of our trainees he got a not authorization notice some seven months before the selected test window but he just waited uh till a month before or two months before the test window the actual exam and tried to book a center he couldn't book anything close to his place of residence so he had to fly another country because uh, otherwise he had to wait another six months and uh, period their scheduling fee uh, well it's very important that as soon as you receive email authorization uh you book your uh, test center and be there at the exam at least or if you're doing prometric be there uh, sit uh, behind your laptop half an hour before your exam schedule and because the day-long exam it starts at 8 30 uh, normally at your local time it's always better to reach uh, there like half an hour earlier if you uh, try to be late by 15 minutes more than 15 minutes they might refuse you so that means uh, no show and uh, you have to uh, again reschedule pay the rescheduling fee 300 dollars and do it say five six months later uh, photo id and security check so once uh, either remote or in person uh, you should have a valid government issued and expired original government issued photo id and it should be photo like a passport a driving license and it should be valid um, one of our candidates he uh, went there with an expired driving license uh, uh, so they asked him for a valid one by the time you know he went and brought his uh, a valid passport it was half an hour late passed and then you know they refused him entry so and he had to attend the exam six months later and pay the reschedule so it's just not worth it uh, make sure that it's a photo id is government issued like a license like a military id or a passport and it's valid make sure it's absolutely it's valid and as a ref uh, plan b or try to have a second one as well so both have both your driving license and uh, passport and it should be latin also make sure if it is in any other language they will not accept so before you sit for the exam they will check your government uh, issued photo id valid one uh, ask you to sign in check your you with a metal detector uh, ask you to turn up your sleeves uh, check your pockets look at your reading glass to see there is no recording device on it Ask you some security question, date of birth, email address. Um, you cannot carry anything with you inside the examination except a bottle of water. Uh, no ornaments allowed except a wedding ring. And they will supply you with a pocket calculator and then four green size, A4 size papers and a pencil. Uh, uh, so, <coughs> Uh, and then uh, you start with the tutorial okay now let's see what will happen in tutorial uh, there is a link here that takes you to tutorial so uh, tells you what you'll see in the actual exam the tutorial actually tells you how the system works how the buttons work uh, what are these icons means what you can do 
and that sort of thing. Uh, it's actually a replica of the tutorial you'll see in the exam if you click this button. This takes around 10 minutes uh, or if you end it earlier. Okay, so it's always better to look at this link and you know, you're more at ease during the exam. Um, so you know beforehand how this system works. We'll also explain it in our other videos. Uh, these icons are very simple and user-friendly. Uh, so there's important things there. You can flag off the question you don't want it. You can right-click, uh, put the mouse on a point the mouse at the answer and right-click it. That will strike it up so you can concentrate on other questions that you think are right. Um, you can also see your uh, time remaining and uh, at the top corner, uh, top left or right, left hand corner, and uh, the number of question attempted, and uh, you can also jump from question to question, and you can review all question, review all button, or uh, review all flag of question. Uh, so this is 10 minutes. Uh, so if you don't start after 10 minutes, the exam automatically starts, and the minute it starts, the clock starts running. Uh, there's no negative marking, uh, roughly 70%. So they do the scoring based on a scale of 400 minimum, 500 maximum. And uh, so they want to have a, a standard level of difficulty for all, all exam windows. But to put it in a simple language, it's, you need to uh, uh, answer 70% of question correctly. Uh, at the end, again, click all, uh, uh, review all button, and then see that you have answered all the question. Anything that you haven't answered, uh, it has a different color, or you can review the incomplete question. And as I said, there is no negative marking, so make absolutely sure that uh, you answer all the question, even if you have no clue. Okay, let's see what is the API 5 team exam sequence. Um, so you got two parts, closed and open book. First, you would answer the closed book part, two hours, 45 minutes, 110 question. And after that, you have a maximum of 45 minutes break when you leave the building or, and you can also use the locker at this period. Um, after the break, uh, you would start the second part and there are 60 questions, three hours, 45 minutes. And there would be reference documents in PDF format on your uh, computer screen with search buttons disabled. So you need to know how to navigate through the these documents. Okay, you can search them. Uh, the 45 minute break, exam break between close and open book. Uh, before you attend the exam, they will provide the key to a locker. If you are doing the remote exam, then uh, you have to turn the computer around the laptop around so to make sure that uh, the invigilator who is watching you during the exam that there is nothing at your table uh, and there would be the same security and everything else and you cannot leave the room uh, or nobody can enter the room without uh, absolutely nobody can enter the room during the exam and you cannot leave the room without the invigilator's permission uh, if you want to use a toilet or for anything else during the 45 minute break, you're allowed to leave, use your locker, um, but make sure that you come back around, say five minutes before the, your 45 minutes break is up because uh, the minute the 45 minutes is uh, spent, then the second part or the open book part would start, regardless whether you have reported to the test center or you are behind the laptop or your computer or not. So it's actually coming off your time. So it automatically starts. Or if you come earlier than 45 minutes, then you can start it earlier by clicking starting the second, the uh, open book exam part. Uh, so I, one of our candidates for 570, he left for lunch, uh, and then apparently he get lost. Uh, so by the time he came, he was half an hour late. So. So that half an hour came from his uh, allocated time of 3 hour 45 minutes. So he had only 3 hour 15 minutes to answer the 60 question. So make sure that 
you are at your desk because the exam, the clock starts ticking the minute the 45 minutes break is up. Um, let's have some tips on time management during the exam. Uh, remember that uh, if you need to leave the examination room, say for using the toilet or filling up your water bottle or drinking water or for any other reason, uh, you have to report to the security outside the examination room, sign out. On return, you shall go through the same initial security check and sign in. So all this time, the clock is running. Okay, if you are leaving any comments on the, uh, any questions, uh, you're going out for any reason, the minute the clock starts ticking, it will, uh, it will not pause for you to use the toilet or anything. Uh, and then, or you end the exam button, press it, that's when the, your, the time is up. Uh, so, then before you end the exam button, if you want to end it earlier, which we do not recommend, use your maximum allocated time. Say, for example, press review all button uh, or flagged off, uh, review all flagged off question and go to all over again and just make sure that you answered all the question and you have actually, you shouldn't be too fast because you might lose the track of what's going on and uh, the actual question asking you and you might choose a wrong answer. Okay, uh, again, a repeat of what are the number of question? 170 question, 140 are scored, 30 pre-scored question. Uh, that does not affect your score, but because they are shuffled together uh, and they are not marked, uh, so you have to answer all the 170 question. Um, and we have told you the reason is that they are, these are new questions that the API wants to test as an experimental question to see that they are actually be answered by sufficient number of people. They are not too difficult or uh, they are not too easy or they are not being challenged by candidates. And then they become part of a scored question on a uh, question data bank. So as soon as you finish your exam results, okay, as soon as you finish your exam, you receive an email on uh, from API and it will tell you immediately whether you have a preliminary pass, a preliminary marginal or preliminary not pass. So the pass means most probably you pass, the not pass means uh, most probably you fail and the marginal means it's just too close to call. The reason is that API, uh, were scaling and you might be anything between 79 to 69% uh, to 71%. On average, you need to uh, answer 70% of question right. Yeah, but if uh, the exam was slightly difficult, they will adjust the scores. And so it might be just 1% up or down the 70% bar mark. So if you fail, you have to wait for the final score and after uh, uh, see the the final score then see if you fail then you have to reschedule and pay the three hundred dollars fee and normally you receive again an email authorization from api this time they don't need the uh, references uh, so as soon as you pay and reschedule uh, you receive the email authorization then you book with prometrix center as soon as possible so uh, API 510 certification, risk certification, and cost. Um, so initial certification is $940. And after three years, you need to apply again for recertification. And uh, uh, you should have 20% of the time, you should have worked as an API 510 inspector. And the recertification cost is $730. You can apply uh, up to 90 days before your certification expires. A 90 day grace period after that, subject to late fee of $150. But after 90 days of your uh, certification expiry date, still you have not applied. That means that you have to uh, submit a fresh application to pay the full fees of $940 and attend the exam all over again. But within 90 days grace time, you can pay a late fee of $150 and still get recertified. Uh, every six years, API asks you to do a quiz um, 
on top of the recertification document and uh, 25 question uh, you can finish it up to uh, four hours you have time to complete the quiz it's online one and you can interrupt it up to uh, three times if you fail the quiz once you can do it again second time if you fail again then you need to again submit a fresh application and do the full exam in this case okay let's see what are the publication effects sheet and body of knowledge so if you go to api icp website and uh, you see two uh, documents uh, named publication effective sheet which actually tells you which documents you have to study from which revision and the body of knowledge which again says the list of documents without revision but ask you uh, tell you give you example of the, which section you have to study what you, ex you actually expect to know uh, so anything comes in body of knowledge actually should be read twice and that's what uh, uh, we have incorporated in our e-learning uh, anything you see on publication effects sheet in red column that means that's a new document or a new revision has been added compared to the last uh, exam window and uh, we always follow the latest publication effective sheet and body of knowledge for your information okay another area to see uh, what are the highest scoring areas is that uh, area of examination scores uh, as you can see in these tables uh, and the, your score should be, be something uh, like this uh, so on scope and general application of 510 you will have five question uh, damage mechanism 15 repair 15 in the uh, which is asthma section 515 and welding asthma section uh, 9 and API 577 is 15 uh, design as a section 8 construction code is 10 as you see there are not many uh, question coming from construction code planning that's very important that's 20 that comes from 510 572 uh, inspection and testing practices again 572 is 15 and damage mechanism as you know is 571 uh, 15 and uh, repair also comes of a combination of PCC2, 510, 572, it is 15. And then you have inspection and testing practices, again 572, inspect pressure relief devices, 576, 4, data evaluation, that's a combination of like mostly 510, 20, uh, question comes and roles and responsibilities again from 510 six question and a total score of 140 which uh, uh, on a scale it will be 500 so you have to answer 70 percent of them right let's go to exam tips and uh, just give you a few tips here uh, so thickness calculation uh, uh it's look api never answers ask answer like 0 0.0075 and 0 0.007 or uh, the, 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 the possible answer are not very close to each other so they don't want to trick you to if you can round it off or not so the the the, the, uh, the possible answer would be by the part so for example if you did a calculation you get 0 0.0075 is simply 0 0.007 just round it off just drop or if it is say the pressure you have calculated to be 239.3 psi is actually you can always use 239 and compare the result uh, the possible answer and uh, choose the right one uh, they would not be 239 point uh, like 240 or 238 other possible answer they would be wide apart so you, you, you the answer you calculate if it's right is is it will be very close or almost same as the right answer uh, the other one would be if, uh, be careful if you are asking you for uh, the, the data input is in British units or in metric ISO units so sometimes the data given in inches or foot and the choice is uh, in millimeter or meter so be careful which one uh, when you're converting this uh, 
API never ask uh, uses the type of answer like all of the above, both A and B or B and C or none of the above. This answer, they, they just one answer that they will ask you to choose. Uh, use common sense. Uh, or it's most likely that the answer is a very simple question. A lot of questions derived from basics, definitions, meaning, scope, exclusion. Remember that API um, has four uh, levels of expertise, uh, trainee, uh, super unsupervised uh, inspector, master, and uh, 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 expert. So, do you being uh, checked according to the level two, which is you should know the very basics. So, it's very important that you understand the terms, definitions, vocabulary, uh, the concepts, etc. Uh, sitting, for exam, can be because it's a long day, can be very stressful. Have enough sleep. You need a lot of energy uh, to endure the day long exam. So don't cram up the night before, have a good sleep, uh, more nutrition, hydrated, and let your brain rest uh, so you are full of energy for the exam. Uh, during exam, uh, you can eliminate the obvious wrong answers. So you can work the power of deduction in case uh, you're not sure about the right answer. So hold on the most which you think is absolutely wrong and right click and strike them off so you can concentrate on possible wrong right answers and choose the best the, uh, the best answer uh, our mock exam question please solve them go to the reference documents start frequenting them actually seeing them with your own eyes where is it because uh, during the exam you need uh, you need to know how to navigate through the documents and unless you don't practice it, uh, you won't get the hack of it. Okay. So even if it's a simple mathematical cal calculation, please solve it. Uh, most of the question actually try to verify your comprehension of principles and theory. So don't just memorize things. Uh, normally it doesn't work. Uh, don't memorize numbers, fig formulas. They're already in the uh, open book and they don't expect you to know that if you know it's fine but you don't need to know that so try to concentrate on the concepts and knowledge so some question might be irrelevant uh, uh, data they, they have given you they don't want to confuse you uh, because in actual scenario api wants to verify that whether you can understand between or differentiate between relevant and non-relevant question uh, data in order to solve the equation or get the answer right uh, so to simply uh, use uh, go and find the formula see what is given and what is wanted and just use those information that is uh, necessary to solve uh, that uh, the question and uh, ignore the rest uh, Pay particular attention to table, charts, figures, footnotes. Uh, we shall explain all this. And uh, uh, during the open book examination, if you can't find the topic, look at the table of content. Or uh, if you can't find it there, look at the list of figures or list of tables. It's high probability that you will find it there, the right page to go to. If you still can't find them within a minute or so, just flag it off, jump to the next question. Don't waste your time. There is a high chance of uh, encountering that topic that you're looking for when you're actually looking for something, something else in uh, other questions. So just make a note of that question and uh, go to next question. And at the end, you can always come back if you still couldn't find the answer. Okay, so that is that to have a better time management than in no shorter time. Thank you for listening. This is end of module one.